BioBalance HealthCast episode 195, Anger, Aggression, and Testosterone. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Today we're going to talk about a myth about testosterone, which I hear a lot when patients come into my office, the myth that testosterone causes aggression or anger. And that myth is simply not true. I've only had two patients that thought they were more angry um, after they had their testosterone out of thousands. Mm -hmm. And I remember both of them. And we'll talk about their case studies after um, Brett gives us more information about why we are, why we get angry and why we get aggressive, not from testosterone. <laughs> no, well, you can get aggression from the chemicals. That, I mean, that's what roid rage is all about. Right, but, but, but not that's not testosterone. testosterone. That's, yeah, that's those steroids. That are like from the, the adrenal gland. Yes, which is where this all starts with the with the adrenal gland. Let me give you a little bit of theory first, and, and theory is just theory. And there's you know, for every psychologist that has a theory, there's another psychologist that has a kind of like a different uh, theory. Yeah, kind of <laughs> like uh, economists. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Freudian theory is that we develop defense mechanisms, mm -hmm. and that defense mechanisms as we age and develop uh, and learn come in a hierarchical series, and that the first or most primitive level of defenses that we have are what are called flight or fight mm -hmm. mechanisms. And so you get things that make you run away from a situation that causes you anxiety or mm -hmm. fear if you mm -hmm. can avoid them. And if you can, you physically go away from the painful or aggressive stimulus, uh, fearful stimulus. Which could just be in your office. You could just be Count, you know, something that happens in your office that makes you feel like you have to go shut your door yeah. or actually yell at somebody. <laughs> yes. Uh, so if you can go away, you go away. If you can't physically go away, you learn to go away inside. You learn to repress or suppress or uh, dissociate, just mm -hmm. break the contact from that high stimulus environment that's mm -hmm. causing you anxiety. Then as you learn and encounter life and learn to manipulate life a little bit better, mm -hmm. the next level of aggression uh, or, or the next level of defense mechanism is anger. Mm -hmm. And so anger actually is a defense mechanism. It's original issue equipment. We all have it. <laughs> you cannot not have anger. Uh, so a child who becomes mobile and can begin to manipulate his environment, who gets frustrated or anxious, upset about something, will use anger to try to dominate and control it. And so little children hit their moms or bite people, mm -hmm. you know, to express their frustration with the world not being the way they want it to be. Mm -hmm. And so what you do as parents is you teach them that they can't act out that behavior that way. You don't tell them or teach them that they can't have that feeling because they're going to have that feeling. You're still going to get angry. If, if, if well, adults have that feeling. Adults have that feeling. As long as you live, things will happen that make you angry. Mm -hmm. And so you shouldn't be afraid of your anger. You should learn to use it as a defense mechanism, as a protective device, but you have to learn to express it appropriately. So road rage is not a good expression of anger. It, it's often displaced anger from mm -hmm. a myriad of sources of things that are going on mm -hmm. in your life that suddenly burst through the membrane because the adrenaline happens. Something mm -hmm. explodes within you mm -hmm. because all that adrenaline pours into your system, and then you act out in some way. So uh, actually having a conversation with my son this weekend, he's 18, about explosions of anger. And I was telling him that when I was a young adult, I was working on my car and uh, trying to tighten a, a nut on the valve cover mm -hmm. and the wrench slipped off and I barked my knuckles mm -hmm. and it made me so furious that I threw the the wrench that yeah. I had and it actually stuck in the drywall of the garage it was like sticking straight in uh, so then I had a Remember repair cost I had a hand yeah so I learned you know hire this work done <laughs> yeah but but I wasn't I was mad about some other things right well anger can be a protective thing. It can be used productively. You can harness and direct your anger as a motivating force for yourself. Like when I was in high school, I was told I was not smart enough to go to college. That made, and then I should get <laughs> Whatever it. those people are. <laughs> well, whatever, but, but it made me mad. Yeah. And so I harnessed that anger 
to discipline my behavior in ways that it provided a motivating force for me to keep me working my way through college. That's what I call turning it inside out. Turning because it inside that's, out. Because I, I always tell um, my friends that I would never have been so productive mm-hmm. had I not been told, you're in the 70s, had I not yes. grown up when I did, you can't you can't be a doctor. Girls you're aren't just doctors. A girl. You're yeah. just a girl. A you should go to home ec. You look like a home ec teacher. Right. You look like a model. You look like somebody else. Not a doctor. You can't possibly do that. In fact, an, an admissions doctor told me I should be. I looked like a home ec teacher, so I should be you one. Why don't you go down to the home ec department? Didn't matter and sign how up. many A's I had. It didn't, ha- right. didn't matter what my grades were. were, what my test scores were. I just looked that way, so I should just go change right. my profession. And so goals. you could have gone for his juggler and ripped yeah. it out, yeah. or you could have taken that motivation and that's that what came I did. from that anger and disciplined your behaviors to excel in med school. Right, and every time somebody calls me, oh, honey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I want to jump over and sure. st- you know, strangle and, and them. And so you, all your life, you're, I just turn it into something else. You're going to have that feeling. It mm-hmm. is original. It issue doesn't go equipment. away when you're 59. <laughs> but there are levels I, I used to work with people. Some some people learn to manage their anger by learning, uh, and, and you have this with parenting. If parents limit a child's expression of anger by being bigger and more rageful, yeah. if they frighten the child mm-hmm. into learning, never let me see your anger. Mm-hmm. Never let anyone see your anger. Stuff it. Lock it down. And they do that by overwhelming them with their own rage. Right. Then that's a bad lesson. It's destructive. You, know, you have to use. teach them because then it's an all or nothing response. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm rageful. Mm-hmm. There are no levels or degrees of the expression or the awareness of anger. Anger is information that comes to you like pain. Mm-hmm. Pain is a useful thing. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be overwhelmed or destroyed by pain. We want to be able to control and limit pain, but we want to be able to feel pain. Pain mm-hmm. gives you information. If my hand is on the stove and the stove is hot, it tells mm-hmm. me move my hand mm-hmm. before my, my skin burns. You know, you see those horrible case studies about kids that have those nerves cut that don't transmit mm-hmm. the pain signals to the central nervous system, mm-hmm. and they can, like, put their eyes out and, mm-hmm. and laugh. Right. I mean, those those kids exist, feel, yeah, yeah, because they don't feel it. So, so, so I hear you saying that these ways to make ourselves feel better, right, are can be productive, can be productive, and don't have to be destructive, but but they can be maladaptive and destructive. But are more uh, a developmental thing, educational, more educational, developmental yes. way of handling our environment, and not internally a chemical issue. Exactly. So, so Freud says. There are these hierarchies of defense mechanism mm-hmm. that come with, with maturity, development, education. Mm-hmm. And so you have the flight or fight, which are the primitive defenses. Mm-hmm. You have anger, which is the next mm-hmm. level. And the third level is what are called the compromise reactions. Mm-hmm. So you take these energies and develop compromise or adaptive uh, responses that allow you to regulate and control them so that you can harness anger as a motivating mm-hmm. force and not have it be a destructive force. Right. So... What I would work with in counseling is these people that had learned the all or nothing switch. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm fine, I'm explosive. Mm -hmm. And they would be terrified of their rage. Mm -hmm. Uh, What some people do, it's like when you try to control your feelings, if your feelings are too overwhelming, you try to reduce them down and numb yourself out Mm -hmm. so that you're not flooded by these horrible, overwhelming feelings. Mm -hmm. And people that numb their feelings out and reduce their feelings down, it's like a funnel is is the analogy that I often use. So I squeeze all my feelings down and it it becomes an either or. What I, in my experience, what people were able to do is they reduce it down to anger or they reduce it down to pain. And so they cry mm-hmm. or they rage, and then they go numb. Okay. And so when you start working with them in counseling and you want them to have access to all of their emotions and all of their feelings so that they can be healthy, what you have to tell them is when you start coming back the other way, and you start feeling your feelings, you're going to feel really rageful, mm-hmm. like I'm ready to go out and kill people. Or you're going to feel, this hurts so much, I can't survive it. The pain is too overwhelming. And it's like uh, in, in the movies where they have the dam that breaks and floods mm-hmm. the valley and washes mm-hmm. away all the homes. That That's a wall of intensity that you will break through, and then you will be able to have normal ranges. And you're not going to go kill people, and you're not going to die from crying too much. You're not going to mm-hmm. lock yourself in the closet and just cry yourself to death. But it's going to feel like that. So it's a beginning. prediction 
so that they know what to expect right. so that they don't they they don't they're not completely they're not overwhelmed by it. by it and they don't give up they mm-hmm. fight their way through it to mm-hmm. a normal range and then they can learn adaptive behaviors they can learn coping strategies and new skills for dealing with mm-hmm. these feelings one of the things that i try to teach them is a hierarchy of anger mm-hmm. you know i'm uh i'm irritated i'm mad i'm angry i'm rageful and you have to learn the differences and what i teach people in counseling is you have to label it uh and, and you have to externalize it so I have to feel it, know what it is. I'm irritated. And, and so we talk about situations that will come up. Like if, if I miss a traffic light, if it turns yellow and mm-hmm. I have to stop and I slam on my brakes. Like I was driving somewhere the other day and I was getting this way because this old person who was retired, <laughs> who didn't have to be anywhere in a hurry, pulls out in front of me without warming up their car and they're going five miles an hour and I need to be somewhere. You're in my way. Get off my road. And they puddle along and the light turns yellow and they go through it and I get stuck. I don't know if that ever happens to you, but these idiots always, they get through the light, but they drive in such a way that I don't make the light. Mm -hmm. So I'm mad. Now I can have a They're not thinking about you. No, uh, I'm not even on their radar. (laughs) I'm not important. God knows. Uh, But I can be rageful. I can have that cause me physiological problems, ulcers, headaches. I can have it cause me legal problems because I get out and and, and shoot somebody and the policeman arrests me. (laughs) Or I can label it and externalize it. And I can say. You know why that works? Why? Because it switches the side of your brain you're on. Yeah. So so you're on that emotional side of your brain, which is your right side. Yeah. And so you're, you're all emotional. And, and the minute... You you have to own it. You switch sides of your brain, yeah. and then you're not so emotional. So you can actually keep that right. working. So I, on I, this I, side, you stop being yes overtly angry. Yeah, you bring your consciousness into it. Right. I feel it. I label it. I externalize it. So I say, I'm really mad. That son of a gun caused me to miss this light. Mm-hmm. Now. Then I can do something with that information. How special am I? He's not even thinking about me. What does it matter? My wife says to me, you're retired. You got all day to get there. What's your hurry? Slow down. Chill out. And then I want to get mad at her. Like, leave me alone. Don't tell me how to drive. You know? Well, as a, as a civilized man, I don't want to behave that way. Mm-hmm. And when I can think about it, I can make choices about my outlets. I can make choices about my understanding of the reality. Reality didn't change. I missed the light. Mm-hmm. But my understanding of it can change, and then I can make choices that allow me other options, and I don't belong to my rage. My rage is useful information. It's limited. It's not rage. It's filtered down. It's irritation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm irritated. I'm mad. I'm angry. I'm not rageful. And I don't really get rageful anymore unless I'm in a crisis survival situation. Mm-hmm. The rest of the time, I get mad or I get irritated, and I can choose how I'm going to express it and experience it. That's a, that's a good way to manage it. I, that's a, I mean, if we could all manage that yeah. by consciously doing that and learn to do that, that usually takes therapy. Yeah. But we can still use that as when the next time you feel mad, actually switch it to the other side and say, why am I mad? And and yeah. and do and I want to be? Do I want to be mad? And what are the consequences if I act on this? Yes. So, But there are some people who are... Depressed, and we talked about depression, right. and we talked about depression actually changing how we how angry we get because depression causes us to be we're irritable and we're unhappy and we're but but oftentimes we're so tired and and so drained our neurotransmitters are low and we're we're just totally um, kind of a zombie. Mm-hmm. So if we were angry, we dismiss it because we're too tired to be angry, or we just ignore it. One of the things that I was taught in school was that depression is a form of rage against self. So I turn that that rage against Mm -hmm. myself and I deplete my energy. I deplete my capacity, my responsiveness, and I kind of sit in the puddle and I'm down and out because I have all this uh, rage that I don't know how to dissipate. I don't know how to change my behaviors to modify my environment so that the things that are making me angry are dealt with in a healthy or appropriate way. So I push all that against myself and I punish myself by being rageful, but it doesn't come out as rage. Uh, so then I start trying to medicate that mm-hmm. anger or that de- depression. So, and so people do different things when they're really depressed. Mm-hmm. And one thing that a lot of people do is they eat. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I self medicate yep. to mm-hmm. heal my anger because it gives you a little, it gives eating. you a little energy to begin with. Some people drink, mm-hmm. and that kind of wipes away their that dulls their senses, so they don't have to feel the rage. Right. But what happens when people are um, internally depressed? They're they're not external. It's not a reaction to their. That's the biochemical depression. It's just a biochemical depression where. Where because of something, and it could be because they're menopausal. It could be because their their testosterone's low. Right. They become depressed, mm-hmm. and they actually they're actually feeling the depression, but don't have a good behavioral reason for it. Right. They come in and say to me, "I don't know why I'm depressed. Everything in my life's perfect. I have." A great husband. I have great kids, and and I'm so depressed. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't feel like doing anything. And in those cases, it often is because they don't have testosterone. Mm-hmm. But what's yes. fascinating, and what you will hear, is if you give them testosterone, and that brings them some energy, mm-hmm. and the depression starts to go away, which it mm-hmm. often does. And a lot of the people that you see who are on antidepressants mm-hmm. actually can come off of those right. with do. their doctor's mm-hmm. guidance and advice mm-hmm. uh, after a period of time. But then that's the person that's going to come in and say, oh, my God, I got angry. I was I screamed at my child or my husband or mm-hmm. I got mad at somebody driving. I didn't used to be this way. The testosterone made me angry. Although... I think it's more of a of a of a old wives' tale than it is a reality because right. most people come in and say I'm so much happier now yes. that I'm not angry anymore or I can deal with my problems. And what I would say, and so I have very few that come in angry. I know you do. like two. <laughs> but what I would say is they were probably angry people when they were young. They mm-hmm. didn't learn to compensate for or correct for the things that made them angry. They didn't mm-hmm. learn a healthy adaptation for that natural feeling of anger. Mm-hmm. And when the testosterone comes back and the feelings come back, it's like that funnel. And when the you depression goes away. The funnel, mm-hmm. and they start to come back. They're going to be in touch with the feelings that they were typically in touch with. And if they were angry people when they were younger, mm-hmm. they're going to be angry people now. And that's what we found. I found and, with one. Yeah. Uh, and that's and when I question, you know, talk to his spouse. Right. Was he like and, this before he lost his? And, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, he was. But we we're kind of happy with him like that, with the depressed mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we we're happy with the depressed guy. But the guy that's really angry, we don't, we don't want that. We don't want that back. They're we like, don't want that in our we're lives. Gonna, could you not to get? They're trying to manage his life, their lives through managing his hormones. Could you just stop giving him that? I'm like, you're not my patient. <laughs> He is. And he is. he's going to have to decide that. You're going to have to confront him and talk to him about that. And then he's going to have That's to figure out what to, what to do with it. Right. You know, you can't feel selectively. You can be <laughs> numb or you can feel. Yeah. And if you feel, you're going to have that full range of feelings. And so what you're going to have to do is figure out what's making me angry and mm-hmm. what do I want to do with this anger? What's a, a healthy thing to do with this? And, you know, maybe I can't change my environment. Maybe I don't want to get a divorce. Maybe I can't quit my job. So how can I, in a healthy way, absorb and drain out these feelings? Maybe I can run for office then. I could take my anger and I could do that. That's I mean, right. That seems or to be what some people Or maybe you could just do. run or work out <laughs> yeah. or get a hobby. But, 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 you but have, everybody has their own way. Yes. I mean, it's not like I can say, oh, my... my no, there's I, not a one When I was fits. going through all the no testosterone, yeah. one of my girlfriends who runs said, well, you should just run marathons with me. Mm-hmm. I just looked at her and I go... I used to run when I was younger, but I don't want to wreck my knees. I mean, and my dad's knees are gone, and, and it wasn't my answer. That's right. not my answer for this. Oh, yeah, it is. It is because it was hers. That's her answer. She thought it was my answer. So it doesn't work quite like that. So you have to well, find let, help your friends find their answer. And answers, <laughs> answers are about balance. They're not about solutions. Because then you have an addiction and you have a distortion and, and everything about to running. running. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Or shopping or eating or mm-hmm. exercising. I had a client that wore out three Stairmasters. Right. And I kept yeah. saying to her, that's too much. You're, you're uh, three hours a day on, a, with, on any machine is too much. So that you don't have to feel <laughs> these feelings that are frightening or uncomfortable to you. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to deal with these feelings or your life is going to get so skewed or stay so skewed that you are going to be miserable and unhappy. Mm-hmm. So And no amount gotta, of running is going to fix no, it. No, you got to face it. And you got to figure out how can I deal with this in a healthy and productive way that, that satisfies my needs. It's not a, an answer for everybody, mm-hmm. but it's going to be one that fits me. So it's about the balance. It's hard to get out of a, a depression that yeah. you don't have medication for or the medication's not working because right. really you need testosterone back. If you're 
if you're in a depression like that, you're at the bottom of a well. Right. And nobody's throwing you a rope. Right. And so oftentimes testosterone will actually lift you out of the out of the well. But mm -hmm. but if you have an antidepressant, oftentimes that's just that's not really treating the problem. It's treating the symptom. Right. And so that's throwing you a rope so you can climb up. Right. So those things are helpful in both ways. One one kind of wipes out a depression that's internal and one helps you function while yeah, you have if, the depression if, or if, makes you not feel quite so emotional. If your depression gets so low that you're not functional, right. then medicine can help you by putting a floor under it. it the medicine blocks the physiology mm -hmm. from getting that low. So it gives you breathing room and it gives you some capacity to function that you didn't mm -hmm. have. But you still have to make lifestyle changes. But that's your time to have a, a reprieve so that yes. you can then change the things that, that aren't working for you yes. or find a healthier way to deal with it. And it may be that the answer is you need to look at whether or not you want to get a divorce or you need to look at whether or not you can continue to work this job. You know, maybe if you made a different choice, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have these negative feelings. A lot of people change jobs or get yeah. or get promoted after they've started the testosterone because they're they're better at their work, also they can think better, but also they actually are, seem to be a better employee because they have so much more confidence and energy and they don't act depressed. Nobody really wants a depressed employee. And their relationships improve. Yeah. Uh, depressed people are hard to be around. I know. I've been it's, it's burdensome. And and there's no visible reason. I mean, it's one thing if you're on crutches and, you know, I can give you compassion because mm -hmm. I see it. But if you're depressed, I get mad at you after a while. It's or like, it's catching. You know, we want, to, we want to go to the movies. You want to go out to dinner. Yeah. We want to sit and have a conversation. You're depressed. You are a heavy weight. In my life. And it also makes the people around them depressed. Yes. So it's like it's almost like a communicable disease. So everybody gets depressed because one person is just, you know, they don't know what to do with it. Right. Or they get visibly angry. I mean, not all anger goes into depression, but a lot of being depressed is that unrecognized and undealt with anger. So to, to kind of summarize this. Yeah. Is that where we are? Do you have De some more depression, things? No, the depression is original issue equipment. Everybody has it. You cannot not have it. I'm not depression. Anger. Anger. Sorry. Uh, but you have to learn and evolve. What are the healthy ways to recognize and use my anger? Mm -hmm. Then there are biochemical imbalances that can be caused by a lot of things. Loss of testosterone, other issues that cause depression. Mm -hmm. If you treat that and the depression goes away, the anger is going to be there. These two people mm -hmm. you were talking mm -hmm. about, they were angry before. Mm -hmm. So testosterone replacement in and of itself doesn't cause people to be it angry. usually smooths them out. Smooths them out. Makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. Gives them the energy and the opportunity to then face and challenge those emotional blockages that they're afraid of mm -hmm. or that cause them so much anxiety they don't know what to do with. That's right. That's right. So it's, it is a benefit for... For somebody who's angry, it's not. It is to not feel it. a cause. You got to feel it. If you don't yeah. feel it, it isn't ever going to get fixed. Right, but it's not going to destroy you. Counseling if you learn. is so good for for yeah. that, and counseling plus testosterone, as we've noted in our right. patients that we share, uh, which is, is why we started key. working together in yeah. the beginning. Yeah, you you need the two components. But thank you very much for listening with us, and I hope this helped. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.